Hey everyone, I'm Jake from Jake M Media, and today we're talking about the Canon PowerShot Elf 360 HS. This was one of the first cameras I ever got, and it was perfect for me considering it's a point and shoot, and I was a beginner not knowing what I was doing. Some of the things I love about this camera is the small size, it's real portable, you can fit it in your pocket. Another thing is that it's just a nice grab and go camera. Uh, you can just grab it and start shooting videos or photos real easily. Also, it's a real easy camera to just pick up and start shooting. With that said, let's get into the specs. And keep in mind, the specs of this camera aren't going to be the best considering it is a point and shoot. Starting off, we have the image sensor, and this thing has a 20.2 megapixel, 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor, which is powered by the Digic 4 Plus processor. So 20 megapixels probably doesn't sound like much, but with an image sensor of this size, it actually is. Moving on, we have ISO range, and the ISO in this camera goes from 80 up to 3200. And honestly, when you get up to around 800 ISO, it starts to get a little grainy. After that, we have frames per second, and this camera can do 2.5 frames per second when you have it at 20.2 megapixels. But when you drop it down to 5 megapixels, you can raise that frames per second up to 7.2. I've never actually used the 7.2 frames per second in this camera at 5 megapixels because honestly I think 5 megapixels is too low, but I guess it's nice to have it there. Moving on we have the lens, and this camera has a fixed lens so you can't take it off like a DSLR or mirrorless camera. And the focal length goes from 4.5 to 54 millimeters, and the full frame equivalent of that is 25 to 300 millimeters. So in my opinion, to be able to go from 25 to 300 on a small camera like this, it's pretty incredible. It actually states on Canon's website that this is a 12 times zoom and it has a four times digital zoom. Also, the focusing range on this is 0.4 inches to infinity. So you should be able to get real close to something and focus on it and also focus on something really far away. Oh, I almost forgot, this also has optical image stabilization, so when you're shooting, it should take away some of that shake. Next, we have aperture range, and the aperture range on this camera goes from f3.6 to f7, so it's not a big range to play with there, but you can't really expect much out of a point and shoot like this. Moving on, we have shutter speed, and this camera has a shutter speed that can go from one second up to one two thousandth of a second, but in long shutter mode, it can go from 15 seconds down to one second. So as far as shutter speed goes in this camera, you have a nice range to work with considering you can take long exposure photos or quick exposure photos. Okay, this next spec is a long one. It's shooting modes, and there's a lot when it comes to this camera, so bear with me. This camera has program mode, hybrid auto, auto creative shot, portrait, smile, wink self timer, face self timer, high speed burst, Handheld night scene, low light, fish eye effect, miniature effect, toy camera effect, monochrome, super vivid, poster effect, fireworks, and long shutter. Why the hell do you need that many shooting modes in a camera? But hey, I guess you have all those modes to use if you ever want to. I know I've personally never used any of them besides the program mode, so go crazy. Moving on, we have another long spec, which is photo effects. And the photo effects in the Canon ELF 360 are My Colors Off, Vivid, Neutral, Sepia, Black and White, Positive Film, Lighter Skin Tone, Darker Skin Tone, Vivid Blue, Vivid Green, Vivid Red, or Custom Color. Again, I don't know why you need all those photo effects, but I guess you have them in case you ever need them. Moving on, we have card slots, and the ELF 360 has one UHS-1 card slot right in the bottom next to the battery. I don't really mind having just one card slot in a camera like this because it's not going to be used professionally anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Next, we have video capabilities, and this camera can do 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, 1280 by 720 at 30 frames per second, and 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second. That is one thing that irritates me about this camera. It doesn't have 24 frames per second. I shoot all my footage in 24 frames per second, and this only has 30, so it's just a little irritating. Hey everyone, I just wanted to jump in here real quick and say that if you aren't subscribed to JCAM Media, I don't know what you're doing with your life. This is the best photo and video channel on YouTube, so subscribe now and make your life better. Now, let's get back to the video. 
Moving on, does this have an EVF or an OVF? And it doesn't really have either. It does have one big LCD monitor though. Now the LCD monitor on this is a three inch TFT color LCD with a wide viewing angle. It has approximately 461,000 dots and 100% viewfinder coverage. In my opinion, the LCD monitor could be better. The resolution on here isn't the best at 461,000 dots but I guess it's just a point and shoot, so learn to live with it. Next, we have Wi-Fi connectivity, and yes, this does have Wi-Fi and NFC, so it allows access for easy photo and video transfer, as long as you have the Canon Connect app. Moving on, we have the battery, and this takes a battery called NB11LH. It states on Canon's website that you should get around 180 shots on a full charge, or when you're in eco mode, you could get up to 265 shots on a full charge. And when you're shooting video, you should get around 40 minutes. Moving on, we have the measurements of this thing and it comes in weighing at about 5.19 ounces. And the dimensions are 3.92 by 2.28 by 0 0.09 inches. And finally, we have price. The price of this camera comes in at $209.99 on Canon's website and it's the same on Amazon's website. Now that we're finished with the specs sheet, I'd like to go through quickly the pros and cons of this camera. Starting off with the pros, this is a very small sized camera. It can fit in your pocket, it's very portable, you can take it just about anywhere and start shooting within seconds. The next pro is that this can shoot full HD. In my opinion, 1920 by 1080 is the industry standard at this point. Some might argue that 4K is, but I would say that 1820 by 1080 Full HD still is industry standard, and the fact that this can do it is pretty nice. And the final pro is that this camera can zoom in really far. With my DSLRs, I have lenses that go from 70 to 200, but they cost a crap ton. With this camera, I only paid 209 bucks, and I got a 25 to 300 millimeter lens. So that's pretty crazy. Moving on, we have cons, and I'd like to start off with something I said earlier in this video, and it's that this camera doesn't have 24 frames per second. It can only do 30 frames per second, and 24 frames per second is how you get that cinematic feel out of all your videos. So the fact that this can't do 24 frames per second is really upsetting. The next con is battery life. In my opinion, the battery life of this camera could be a little better, but then again, it is just a point and shoot, so who knows. And the final con is that this camera only has partially manual functions. What I mean by that is that you can really only manually adjust a few features like your ISO, white balance, and drive mode. All right guys, so this is the video slash vlog test of the Canon ELF 360HS. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is it good, is it bad? Uh, right now we're shooting at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. So it's the highest resolution this camera has to offer along with the only frame rate it offers. Um, right now the conditions outside are very good. Uh, it's super bright out with a lot of snow on the ground. So you're getting a lot of light bounce everywhere. So you shouldn't have to raise the ISO up super high and this video should look good as far as grain and noise goes. All right, now we're gonna do a quick test of the optical image stabilization in this camera. I'm shooting handheld right now and we're gonna go for a quick run down this path. So let's see how it looks. Okay, that was a quick test of the optical image stabilization. I think it's pretty good on this camera, especially considering it's a point and shoot. Now we're gonna test out the zoom of the lens. So we're at the end of this path here and there's a car over there and I'm just gonna zoom into it. Okay, that's 12 times right there. We'll go in the extra four in digital. And that's four times zoom in digital. Just your hands and feet and axe.
All right, guys, this is the final test of the Canon Elf 360 HS. It's the low light test, and honestly, in my opinion, it's pretty grainy. It's very noticeable. You can see a bunch of little speckles uh, in the really, really dark areas, especially. Um, but anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Honestly, I don't think you can really go wrong with point and shoot cameras. I mean, after all, they are made for just that, pointing and shooting. So if you're looking for a professional grade camera, this probably isn't the camera for you. However, if you want something quick and easy to use, then I highly recommend this camera. If you'd like to check out the Canon ELF 360 HS, I'm gonna link it down below. I'll put both the Amazon and Canon links down there. And that's gonna wrap up this video. If you enjoyed watching this video and wanna see more just like this, subscribe by clicking right here. Thanks again for watching and always remember to capture great moments.